right now on Denver 7 News at 4. Evacuations from multiple fires south of the Denver Metro and emergency alerts sent to the wrong people. A growing number of once thriving malls are getting new life, in some cases as hospitals. How this could mean more people who have struggled to easily access health care now have that option. And with high grocery prices, some people are finding a unique way to save. The big boom we're seeing right now around foraging for food. Plus, from church to housing, the innovations being made to create more affordable housing in Denver. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Jason Grenauer. We want to start off with some breaking news at four. Broncos wide receiver Jerry Judy was arrested Thursday by deputies in Arapahoe County, according to the sheriff's office. Now, the sheriff's office says Judy is being held on second degree criminal tampering charges with domestic violence enhancer. That is a misdemeanor charge. Now we are told no physical violence was involved. Judy is being held without bond. We're still trying to learn more about what happened and what led up to his arrest. The Broncos did release a statement saying they are aware of it. We will have continuing coverage on this as we learn more both on air and online. Two fires today in Colorado Springs prompted evacuation orders. Fire crews there say the Ackerman fire has burned approximately 25 acres and 500 houses have been evacuated. The Rocky Mountain Vibes have opened UC Health Park as a safe evacuation site. Also in the Springs, eight mobile homes were destroyed at Skylark Mobile Home Park after a fire sparked. The cause of that fire is under investigation. Meteorologist Stacy Donaldson joins us now. Stacy, hot temps and wind are never good in these situations. What's our outlook? Well, it's not great. The winds are howling here across Colorado, and we have red flag warnings in effect for a huge chunk of the state. As you can see, our winds are gusting at 41 miles an hour at VIA, and about the same across the eastern plains and up in the higher elevations. A wider look here shows that we have gusty winds all across the state and of course that red flag warning in effect for most of Colorado. At this point our relative humidities are very low as well. 9% here in Denver, 7% in Akron and 4% in Lyman and Burlington. So when we talk about that high fire danger, those humidity levels go way down and then the winds really pick up. So high fire danger here all across the metro, across eastern Colorado, down into the southern part of the state through tonight and then again into tomorrow. We also have for Saturday a fire weather watch that's already been issued from Salida to Alamosa into Pueblo. So it'll be breezy in through tonight, but comfortable temperatures in the 60s through 9 o'clock, and then we'll drop into the 50s after that. Yes, we do have to be careful, though, into the coming days as we hang on to that high fire danger. All right, Stacy, thank you. Now, while those fires were breaking out, residents in Castle Rock and parts of Douglas County were given a scare after getting an emergency alert by mistake. Falcon Fire Department and the town of Castle Rock tweeted soon after that there was no emergency in those areas, and it was meant for residents near those fires in Colorado Springs. Hundreds of Lakewood High School students ditched class today, protesting for abortion rights. Students from six Jefferson County high schools participated in the walkout. Students in Aurora walked out as well, and Denver Public School students made their way to the state capitol. This comes as the Supreme Court meets for the first time since that opinion draft on Roe v. Wade leaked out to the public. Meantime, Colorado nurses also joined a national protest today. The nurses met at the state capitol to protest low pay, staffing ratios, and violence against health care workers. We are now under two hours to go until we know who and when the Broncos are going to play this upcoming season. Denver 7's Troy Rank joins us from Dove Valley. And Troy, no official word yet, but there are some rumblings out there, including some primetime games. Yes, Jason, we actually do have official word on the season opener and the home opener. The season opener, as we expected, a Monday night affair in Seattle. This is so juicy and delicious. Russell Wilson's first official game with the Broncos will be against his former team, the Seahawks, in Seattle on September 12th, Monday night. That game should also be simulcast on Denver 7, so be great for us as well. Then a week later, excuse, six days later on Sunday, they will play the Texans in the home opener. But there's some juice to this schedule. They will be in multiple primetime games. This is a difference. Remember, why is this so significant, Jason, that they're on Monday night? Well, they got Russell Wilson. That made them relevant overnight. But they 
they were not on Monday night last year, first time in three decades. It was because they were bad and boring. That is no longer the case. Russell Wilson is now the quarterback of the Broncos. The network certainly noticed that. So the Broncos will open their season. I love this. In Seattle against the Seahawks and Russell Wilson, his record in Seattle, 57 and 25, a 105 quarterback rating. He plays great there. Now he just has to do it for a different team. Back to you, Jason. All right, Troy, thank you. A good chance for the Broncos to start 2-0. and oh. Now, Denver 7 Sports will continue their coverage right here on Denver 7 News at 5 and 6 o'clock. President Biden ordered flags lowered today to remember the more than 1 million Americans who have now lost their lives because of COVID-19. This milestone comes at a time when the pandemic is changing. Testing is no longer a reliable indicator of the virus spread. That's because much of that testing is happening at home or not at all. Deaths and hospitalizations are only gradually climbing, but Johns Hopkins experts say that we can't rule out another possible wave in the coming months. Now, there's also still a lot of research that needs to be done to better understand long COVID. It's not yet clear if the vaccine and boosters protect you from long COVID or if different SARS-CoV-2 variants result in different long-term outcomes. But we do see that fewer people who were vaccinated report long COVID symptoms. An estimated 9 million immediate family members in the U.S. are grieving the loss of a loved one from the virus. The president also met with world leaders today to talk about how to tackle the pandemic as we go forward. The second virtual global COVID summit focused on ongoing funding to continue expansion of vaccines. About 40% of the world's population is still not fully vaccinated. Many, many are children and people who live in poorer countries. Congress has stalled on requests for billions in additional funding to fight COVID here and abroad. Now, there's still work to be done around boosters for older Americans. An estimated one in three Americans over the age of 65 who were initially vaccinated still have not received a third dose, according to the CDC. Seniors are at the highest risk of serious illness from COVID and account for about two thirds of deaths. Studies have shown that the booster makes older adults nearly 80% less likely to die from COVID. Health experts say that federal messaging around boosters needs improvement. Now, many older adults are also at risk of experiencing some additional health harm if they wind up in a hospital. Now, that is the finding of a new government accountability report that is out today. It found that one in four adults on Medicare experienced temporary or long lasting harm that mainly led to longer hospital stays. We're talking preventable complications like infections. Now that's down just a little from the last time this review was done. One of its recommendations is further cutting federal reimbursement to poor performing hospitals. New crash testing shows there is still a long way to go to improve driver assistance technology. We're looking at the real life street scenarios where it may work and fail. And if you're already tired of our hot housing market, wait until the middle range of prices hits a million bucks. We break down where we are and where we're headed and just how fast.